from Scholar Headquarters. I'm never sure where to look with this camera. And I apologize for the background noise. We'll see if I'm actually able to use this, but it's really hot in my office, so I have a window open behind us. So I'll, I'll give it a quick test to see if it's working. So this is a posting in my Pursuit of Intellectual Happiness series. And I want to let you know that for me, intellectual happiness is not about going to university, even though that has definitely been part of me finding intellectual happiness. But I want to talk a moment about university. Because this morning I had a conversation with a young woman who called me from another university. She, the message I had was that she wanted to consult with me about her research proposal. I always, I always say yes to requests like that because one of the things that I recognize is that lots of people have difficulty finding mentors at university and men and women of color in particular do. So I am very open to talking to people about their work. But it turned out that more than talking about the work, you really need to talk about what her experience at graduate school was like. And the fact that she was feeling really marginalized because um, people didn't understand her work. And from her description of it, I would say people were discrediting her work and really not recognizing her as a potential scholar in that environment. So I want to talk about university because university can be tough for black women, but more of us need to be there. More of us need to be there so that when students come in, there are people there who understand who they are and what they're about. We need to be there so that when a woman like this is pursuing her degree, she doesn't feel like she's surrounded by people who don't think black women can be scholars. And we need to be there because this is a world that is overwhelmingly dominated by white people and white men in particular. So even though there are lots of women professors, still not enough, but lots of women professors at most universities, they're still in minor roles and still marginalized. So believe me, this is a white male, it's a white male space. Um, but that won't change unless more of us get our degrees. More of us are in the student body, first of all, and then more of us go on to be the people who teach those student bodies. And that's not just important for black women. I very much see what I'm doing here as also representing a space of possibility for other women of color, for men of color, for sexual minorities, for First Nations people, for all kinds of groups who are used to seeing somebody who is nothing like them up at the front of that classroom claiming authority and telling them what counts as good work and what doesn't count. I stand up there to say that this can be a more inclusive experience. So we need more black women in university. Um, and goodness knows I am fatigued at being the only one, the only face of color in so many places. And I say all of that still saying that I love being a professor and I, I really love being in this space. I feel it is full of possibility, but we have to be in there to be part of that possibility. Okay? So now on the broader question of why more black women, why more of us need to be intellectuals. To me, being an intellectual, like I said, it's not about being in university. It's about having um, curiosity about life and the desire to talk about and think about the things that affect us rather than just letting it wash over us. So uh, for example, my mother can have a great conversation with you about growing up in the Caribbean and how that was influenced by the fact that it was a commonwealth country at the time and how slavery was taken up in their, um, in their educational system and all of that sort of thing that really, you know, is, is the kind of intellectualism I'm talking about. She didn't just let it happen to her. She doesn't just let things happen to her. She thinks about them. She talks about them. She wonders about them. And she pursues them. And I think that there are a lot of us that are like that who, who sort of squish down that part of ourselves because we think that it's not valued or it's not useful or it's not appreciated. But you've got to find other people that are like-minded and, and then connect with them around those issues. So when I say you should, when I advocate for pursuing intellectual happiness, what I'm advocating for is 
for all of us to stop being passive recipients of life and to start getting actively involved in understanding, shaping, and exploring and transforming the environments that we're in. Because nothing makes it easier to hold down an oppressive group of people than, um, than stifling the part of them that wants to think and ask questions. So in encouraging you to pursue your intellectual happiness, I encourage you to think, ask questions, and find people to discuss those things with. And then when it comes to the specifics of, uh, you know, what are you going to do with your life? What career should I have? What should I study at school? I think that you know that kind of intellectual stance is what sets you up for finding what it is that you want to do. So if you are the kind of person that goes into a space wanting to see what the possibilities are, wanting to try new things, wanting to find out what you like and what you don't like, the kind of uh, buildings you want to be in, the kind of clothes you want to wear, the kind of people you want to be around, the kind of conversations you want to be having on a day-to-day -day basis, the kind of uh, things that you want to be learning about and becoming more learned about, then I think you will find what it is that you want to do. And, and you know, uh, for me that was social work. I believe that the skills and things that I have used as a social worker and as a social worker academic could have been used in other fields and I might have been happy in, in other fields. So it's not that I think there was one career for me, but I do feel like I found something that really was the right one for me. Um, so I think the path to that is to similarly get out there and, and, and accept and take advantage of anything that gives you a chance to find out more about yourself in terms of what you're good at, what you like, what's important to you, who you want to be around, all that kind of stuff. And that's how I think you find the path. Um, I think that's a path of intellectual happiness and I think that's also a path that takes you to the work that you're meant to do. So those are my thoughts on intellectual happiness with a bit of a, a, bo a bit of bonus material on uh, the fact that I really actually do want more of you to go to university. And not just to university, I want you to go to doctoral programs and then I want you to become academics. Okay? <laughs> All right. So that's it. Um, I'm probably going to do another posting um, in response to some questions that I've been receiving. So uh, yeah, that might be coming up next because i got a lot of work and you know how it is. I like to, pro I like to procrastinate. Bye.